Hey everyone, my name is Adam Rashid and I'm a front end web developer. And in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you a really cool React project. But before I dive into the project, I want to show you the story of how I got to this project. Now, um, I drink coffee a lot. And last week, I was looking at my checking account and turns out I'd spent $60 in that week alone. And it's pretty hard to do with just coffee. So I'm assuming that was pastries and whatever I order with coffee usually when I go out for coffee. So that number didn't really sit well with me because $60 every week, it can average to quite an amount over a year. So I definitely want to cut that down. And the way I wanted to do it is reward myself every time I opt not to go out for coffee and said, put that money aside until I get to a certain amount and then I can do whatever I want with it, put in my savings, pay off credit card, or actually buy something worthwhile having. So what I did was I built an app that just lets me push, say $5 every time I opt to not buy a cup of coffee. And over time, that number will increase to whatever milestone I have. In my case, it'd be cool to see just how long it takes for me to save a hundred bucks. So that's the motivation behind this React tutorial. I'm gonna show you how to build that project in three different modes. The first one is gonna be just a simple out of the box, create React app. And I'm gonna show you how to uh, use your local state and your local storage um, to build this app. And next, I'm gonna show you how to get a little bit more complex and start using Redux. Uh, while this app is pretty simple, it'll show you how to use Redux in a scalable manner so you can build much more complex apps. And lastly, I'm gonna show you how to integrate with Firebase so you can log in and log out of this app and have other users do the same on your app and be able to save their metrics securely. So let's jump into the project. Okay, so first we're gonna start off by looking at our designs and see what we need to do. Uh, we have three states that we essentially need to account for. We have the default state that shows you how much you have saved in total. And if you don't have any amount, it'll say something like you don't have any anything saved yet. And we can always change whatever text we want to, uh, to be right there if there's no uh, money saved. Now we have an active state. For instance, if you are tabbing over or hovering over the button, this is what the button would look like. And then you have the a success state, which is when you press it, and then you'll get this kind of a message right here. And this actually shouldn't be here at all. It should just be the highlight. And then you should see this, uh, congrats, you saved X amount this week. Or we can actually, for simplicity's sake, um, so far. And just have, uh, you've saved X amount so far, just so that this value right here matches this value down here. And then lastly, we have a reset amount button, which will reset our total to zero. And uh, yeah, so it's pretty simple and straightforward and we can get started right away. So first what we wanna do is go to whatever directory we want our project to live in. And in my case, it's just the websites folder I have on my desktop. And then what we wanna do is uh, install a create react app which is a uh, really easy way to get up and running with React. And it's built by the folks at React. So let's go ahead and copy what they want us to do from their docs. So let's just do npx create-react-app. Let's call it drip. And wait a couple of minutes for this to install. Cool, now that's done installing, we just cd into our uh, project. And you can see in here it has uh, information and instructions on how to get your project started. So we're just going to see it into drip, which is our folder name. And then let's also just open this in our code editor. I have VS code and it lets you do fun things like add paths that you can use to open up uh, your code editor. So now what we can do is run yarn start. And wait for this guy to start running. Now what we're going to do is start cleaning this up. So all we have is a blank screen and an app.js component. So right now we have a couple of things that we don't need. We have our logo right here. So let's just get rid of this guy. Then we have our index CSS, which is fine for now. And then our app CSS, let's get rid of all of this. And then we have our app.js in here. We're just going to keep 
this um, outermost div and call this app with a lowercase and get rid of this import of logo because we took rid of it. Uh, we got rid of it and perfect. We have hello computer. Now what we want to do is let's add a, a CSS reset. So let's just Google CSS reset. All right, cool. So let's just copy this guy over into index.css. Perfect. Oops. And sure that there's no extra spaces, no extra lines. So there's a line in between here. And perfect. All right. Okay, cool. So now what we want to do is just start laying out the foundation of our app. And in our case, it's pretty simple. We're just going to be looking at our design and laying down the divs and buttons and stuff that we need. And so before we do that, we want to just simply import this logo into our project. So we're just going to export this as an SVG and go right into our desktop for now. Perfect. And then we're going to open this up by pressing open up our folder by pressing right click and going to reveal in finder. And then we're also going to open up our desktop by pressing command click into our desktop, copy this guy and paste it here. And we have access to our logo. Um, and let me show you that real quick. Let's go to our app and let's go to Uh, we see this right here. This should actually be inside our source. So let's just move that real quick. Perfect. And let's go into our app.js and import uh, logo from dash and strip logo dot SVG. And then we just do an image and give it a source of logo. Perfect. Now we see it appearing here, right here. So let's go back to our design and see what we need to add in. So we have our logo and then we also have a couple buttons and then we have the total and then we have the reset amount and then we have the reset disclaimer. And then the last success state, we also have this uh, pop up that says, congrats, you've saved X so far. So we should start by uh, taking addressing these two buttons first. And uh, this is only designed for mobile or uh, actually I've actually only designed this for the mobile screens, but I definitely also want it to look good on a desktop size. So I'm, I'm guessing these are just spread out like this, like so on a wider screen size. So in order to do that, let's make sure these guys are wrapped in a div. So we'll create the div called, and uh, by the way, VS Code uses Emmet built in, and also uses Emmet in JavaScript, which is really handy for React. So we're gonna do dot button container, and in here we're gonna do two buttons. Call this just button for now. Well, let's call this, uh, yeah, let's just call it class of button. And in here we're gonna say save $5. And we're going to uh, hold down Alt and Shift and press down, and it just duplicates that and adds ten dollars. Or we're going to change that to ten dollars. Boom! Let's get rid of this Hello Computer, and then let's uh, add in our success message. That's going to be called a message. Let's create another div, call it message container, and here we're going to have a paragraph class of message. And in here we're going to do congrats. You've saved. And then we need to style the amount. So let's give it a span of amount or success dash amount. And let's add 65 in here uh, so far. Perfect. Um, cool. And then we need to have our total count. So we create a div or we actually, use, let's just use a paragraph, call it total dash count. 
and you've saved five so far. Perfect. And then we have an area which is the reset. And let's just call that reset dash container. And here we have a reset button. So another button. And let's give this a uh, let's see a um, another style or another class name with a modifier class on it. Let's just call it uh, secondary. Actually, no. Uh, let's just only give this a button uh, class name, and then let's give the more prominent uh, prominent buttons above a modifier of button dash dash primary. Cool, and. Perfect. So now let's um, add this disclaimer in here. Let's just go into sketch and copy this guy and go inside here and do a paragraph and give it a small class name. And let's just put it in here. Perfect. All right. Perfect. Okay. Now let's take a look at what we've built. Cool. It looks like nothing. Looks like just plain old HTML. So now what we need to do is start styling this and I'm going to do that in the next video. And if you'd rather just skip the styling section, all you need to do is just skip the next video and go to video number three. And in there, you'll be able to start seeing me add functionality to this. So I'll see you in the next one.